welcome and thank you for joining us today for this webinar that it will be on scholarships and financial aid for study abroad programs. And I am joined by Maribel Sanchez. She is a student who participated in the study abroad program and is a Gilman scholarship recipient. So she'll be sharing about her experiences a little bit later in the presentation. Um, again, if you can keep yourself muted and video cameras off, that will be helpful during the, the webinar. This is being recorded uh, for future use. And we will have an opportunity at the end for questions. So be thinking of any questions that you might have. Those can be sent in the chat to my colleague, Kayla Klaus. You'll see her uh, in the chat. And anytime you can send her a question at the very end, um, either myself or Mary Bell, we can answer questions that have been sent. So first, um, I just wanna start off with a quick kind of overview of what we're gonna go through for the webinar today. Um, first, I'm gonna talk a little bit about just WSU scholarships and financial aid in general when it comes to using that aid for a study abroad program. So any existing scholarships or financial aid that you might have. And then a second item um, are WSU study abroad scholarships. And so I'll be talking about um, what scholarships you can apply through Wichita State that's specific for study abroad programs, what that process is like, how to apply the amounts, et cetera. And then the third item will be outside scholarships. So we'll share about some of the outside resources that you could be exploring in order to help fund your study abroad program. Um, I'll talk about a few different ones, in particular ones that we've had WSU students apply for and receive in the past. Uh, we will extra highlight the Gilman Scholarship. Um, so we have Mary Bell joining us today to share about that experience and her tips and advice on applying for the Gilman. And then the fourth item is just to kind of talk a little bit about ways to budget um, and help better plan for your study abroad program so that you can find the right program um, that's a good fit for you and also you know, something that meets your budget. First, uh, the financial aid. So uh, any financial aid or scholarships that you may already be receiving through WSU, if you're gonna do like an exchange program or any of our faculty-led programs, a program where you actually pay tuition and fees to WSU, then generally you should still be able to receive any of that financial aid, whether it be loans, Pell Grants, or departmental or college scholarships that you have. Um, if the program is one that you are not enrolling and paying tuition and fees through Wichita State, then it could depend on whether or not you would still be able to get that same aid. Um, and that's just something that we have to look at individually, depending on the program, what type of aid you have. And that's something that uh, my office can help uh, coordinate with the Office of Financial Aid in order to determine if it's something that you would still be able to receive. And then just something to be aware of for any federal aid, the classes do have to count towards your degree. So if you're getting any loans or Pell Grants, then um, we do need to make sure that you're going on a program where the classes could be counting towards your major or your minor or electives, something that would be within your degree program. Um, next would be just kind of the departmental scholarships, but specific for study abroad. So I like to point out a few of those for students to be aware of. Um, first, there's the Honors College. For any students uh, that may be in the Honors College, they have a fund um, specifically available for study abroad. So that's something that you can apply for through them. They have their own separate application process. Um, I'm happy to help with any part of that process. I believe they require a budget um, and then they require kind of an initial um, acceptance letter that you are accepted into the program. So we can certainly provide you with that documentation when you are applying for their scholarships. But if you are in the Honors College, I would definitely encourage you to check that out. Be aware of their deadlines. Uh, they do award scholarships up to $4,000 for study abroad programs. And then the second one I'll mention is the MCLL department. Um, so 
at WSU, um, we have two, you know, excellent programs for uh, language, one being French, and that's the Orléans program in France. Um, students can go for a semester, a year, or a summer program. And typically they offer scholarships specific for that um, uh, exchange. So that is something that through their department that you could apply for. And then also they have the summer Puebla program that's in Mexico, that's for Spanish. And that's another one that they usually have specific scholarships available. You would apply through them. And then the last one that I'll mention is the business school. Um, currently they have a BASI scholarship that's available to business students who are participating in the summer PO program. So sometimes it can depend on the, the actual program that you're wanting to go on, if there might be additional scholarships available uh, that you could apply for. And that's something that our office can certainly help you with. Usually those scholarships will have a different application process, um, not necessarily through our office, but through that department. But we're certainly available to help you in um, the process of applying if you need any help with it, and also just to help you with what uh, resources might be available depending on the particular program that you're going on. Um, so now I wanna talk a little bit about our process um, in the study abroad office for scholarships. We have one application form, it's available on our website. It's a PDF, uh, online fillable PDF, a one page that you fill out. And that would be for any scholarship funding um, that's listed on our website that we have available. Um, that generally includes funding that we receive from the SGA that's specific for study abroad. We also have a Garvey International Fund um, that we have specifically for study abroad. And then uh, we also have another fund that is uh, International De Silva Scholarship specifically for international business majors and minors. So depending on what you might be eligible for, you can certainly fill out the one application and receive funding from any one of those uh, sources. So the actual application itself does require two reference forms. Those need to be submitted directly to our office. The instructions are, are listed also on the actual application. Um, they fill out the form and attach a recommendation letter they can certainly uh, email them to us or they can physically mail them to our office. And then uh, in addition to the reference forms and the actual application, students need to write a one page essay, a statement on financial need and your reasons for studying abroad and kind of how it relates to your future plans. Again, that's all um, outlined on the actual application form that you can see the specific details that would be the process itself of what would be needed to do in order for you to be considered for the study abroad scholarships through WSU. Um, those amounts usually will range between $500 to $2,000 each. It can depend sometimes on the program um, or it may depend on um, the uh, semester that you are going. Uh, sometimes we will award larger amounts for a full semester, full year versus summer programs, but it can vary quite a bit. Um, I would say the average scholarships that we usually award are 1,000 to 1,500 each. Um, we do take financial need into consideration, um, but you don't necessarily have to have um, financial need for all of the scholarships. But um, for some of the ones, we do consider the financial need as a large piece in the decision uh, on making some of those awards. awards. Uh, you would be automatically considered for funds that you meet the eligibility requirements for. Um, and that's listed on our website, uh, what the GBA requirements might be for a particular fund or any other requirements that might be listed. And specifically, you know, the minimum requirements usually is that undergraduates need to have at least 30 credit hours already completed before you do the study abroad program. If it's a graduate student, at least nine credit hours completed. Uh, there could be some exceptions to that. Those don't have to be all credit hours at Wichita State. Um, you know, if you've transferred in from a community college, then we can certainly be counting 
your credit hours at the community college in addition to what you will have done at, at WSU. 2.5 overall GPA is the minimum. Some scholarship funds have a higher GPA requirement. So again, it can depend on which uh, scholarship fund you might be eligible for. And then again, on the financial need, you do need to write that within your essay, um, demonstrating your financial need, because that can uh, affect you know, what scholarships you might be eligible for. And then uh, for the actual program itself, uh, you do have to be accepted to a full-time study abroad program that's approved by our office. So usually what that means is that when you're turning in your scholarship application form, you've also already applied um, to our office for the actual program itself. You've already filled out just the general study abroad application form and submitted that. You may not have received official word that you've been accepted at that time, which is okay, but in order for us to um, actually disperse the funds to you, um, then you obviously would have to be accepted to the program, but not at the time of submitting your application. And then there's the deadlines that are listed. So if you're applying for a spring program, then September 15th is generally our, our deadline to submit the scholarship application form with the references and your essay uh, statement. For fall, it's gonna be February 15th, and then for summer, March 1st. And then I'll also point out, you know, sometimes it just kind of depends on the year, but the last couple of years, we've been able to offer additional scholarships for some of our uh, travel seminars or programs that are less than three weeks. And those uh, may have an earlier deadline, even though it's a summer program and oftentimes are based more on financial need. So it's always good to be planning early. Um, so even though you might see that deadline, um, let's say for a summer and think March 1st, it's good to plan a lot further in advance if you can, so that you don't miss out on any um, scholarship opportunities, ones through Wichita State or um, other outside resources as well. So now I want to talk just a little bit about some outside scholarships. Um, some of these are ones, like I said in earlier that we've had WSU students who've applied for and received them. Um, the Freeman Asia Scholarship is one. It's a, a great scholarship for students, undergraduate students, if you're gonna be studying abroad in East or Southeast Asia. So we've had students that have gone to Japan um, and several students in the past have received this scholarship. Uh, typically it is, I wanna say four or $5,000 um, is the amount of the award and it would usually be for a semester or year long program. Um, our office can help you with the application process. It does require an essay. Um, so we can help review that for you, just like any of the outside scholarships you might apply for. We can help you with that um, process along the way. And then there's the critical language scholarship. So that's actually a fully funded summer study abroad program for students. Um, undergraduate students for you to go and study a critical language. Um, so these might be places that you might not typically think of necessarily going on a study abroad program that we don't have exchange partners with. So for example, you could go to India um, as one location um, and spend your summer on a particular program that the scholarship itself will cover all tuition and fees, your um, living accommodations, it covers your flight, basically covers everything that you need to participate in that particular program. Um, so this is a great opportunity for students who might just be really interested in learning another language. Um, it could be a language you've never studied before. A lot of the opportunities are for beginner uh, students. So this is something you could check out. And again, we would help you with that application process if you are interested in applying for that particular scholarship. And then another um, outside scholarship resource is the Fund for Education Abroad. Um, they provide a lot of different scholarships and ongoing support to students um, from the US that wanna go on study abroad programs, uh, particularly underrepresented students um, for you know, study abroad programs and also ones with financial need. So that's a great opportunity for students to apply for any, it could be anywhere, any destination, uh, whatever program you might already be going on. 
and you can check on their website to see if you're eligible um, based on the particular program and term that, of semester that you would be participating. And then a couple more outside scholarships. Um, Germany is one of our locations that we work with quite a bit because of our exchange partners. We have a couple of exchange partner universities in Germany. So we've had students that have applied for these uh, German scholarships and particularly the UAS-7. Um, that scholarship is available to students who are going to one of their member universities. Um, there's just seven member universities available to US students. And both of our exchange partners are members. So we've had students that have gone to the exchange partner in Hamburg and also students who've gone to our exchange partner in Berlin that have received this scholarship. Um, and the scholarship itself is typically a thousand euros. So it's gonna be a little over a thousand dollars that could cover your flight. Um, so students who might be going to Germany to one of those exchange partners, that's a, a really great resource because we've had a lot of success in our students applying and receiving that scholarship in um, previous years. And then the last item that's listed on there are just search engines. So it's always good to take the time to, on our website, we have several search engines listed on the um, scholarship webpage at the very bottom. And you can just search, um, studyabroad.com is one. You can put in, you know, things related to your program, like the country where you're going or the length of time, and just see what might pop up of, in the way of outside scholarships that you could be eligible for that might not be already listed on some of the ones that we have on our website. So that's an extra way to search and see if there's some other scholarship money out there that you might be able to apply for and receive for your particular program. So now um, I am going to turn this over to Mary Bell, and she is going to share about the Gilman Scholarship and her experience with applying for that so that you can learn a little bit more about a specific scholarship outside resource that would be available to um, WSU students. Hey, thank you, Anne. Well, I'm really excited to be here. As mentioned, my name is Maribel and I received the Gilman Scholarship summer of for my summer of 2019 study abroad program. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more in detail about where I went and how and what kind of program it was. Um, but first, uh, to kind of get us started here, we have a slide that lays out some of the first um, key points that you have to consider before applying to a Gilman scholarship. So you wanna make sure that you're eligible. Um, so being a US citizen or permanent resident is one of the key parts to it. An undergraduate student on Pell Grant. And so if you don't know if you are a Pell Grant um, recipient or a student on a Pell Grant, you can go to your MyWSU page and on the My Finances tab, there's like student aid awards. And so you can check literally there to see if you are a Pell Grant student because this is a, a scholarship that is meant for low income students. And so Pell Grant is a way to, to identify us that way. Um, and then the program has to be a minimum of three weeks. So for, in my case, I was very lucky. My program was literally three weeks. So <laughs> I just made the cut. Um, and then the scholarship amounts, they really range up to $5,000. It's um, interesting the way that they evaluate all of that and you you know have a say in terms of the budget and the cost and stuff, you, you um, upload the, that information, but ultimately you can get up to 5,000. That doesn't mean you will get the entire 5,000, but it means that you could. So that's um, how prices look. And then the next slide here. Uh, kind of a continuation of the first. Uh, these are the components to the um, Gilman Scholarship. There is a lot of pieces actually. So um, the application is one, which means that you're gonna have to take some time to do some of that like demographical information about yourself. Um, still important, but um, less of a time um, ref refrain from you. And then essays is next. So there's three essays um, and they each have their own character count. So you'll be able to know how much is the maximum that you will write. So that's nice. And, and then there's really good tips on the Gilman website site um, that get you started to think gets you started thinking about what kinds of questions that you need to ask yourself that will directly aid in the prompts of those essays. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, you'll have to obtain a transcript. So if you've never done it before, I remember two years ago, I had never even thought about getting a transcript. So I had to look up on the WSU website how to do that. And again, 
just remember to budget in time for all of these components um, if you've never done them before and, and asking for help if you need it. And then the two last pieces are approvals. So you need both the study abroad advisor, which is, I believe, Anne uh, at our school, and the financial aid um, financial aid representative. I'm not sure who that is. We'll have Anne um, fill in that later. But the those two people have to approve your application. So you do have to reach out to them um, to let them know that you're going to apply or you're interested in applying for the Gilman so that they aren't just surprised by this random um, a portal notification that they need to approve someone's application. Um, so that's kind of the, the bolts, nuts and bolts of the application process. And some tips here. So my favorite part. Um, and I really tried to summarize some of these points, um, as you see on the screen, for like clarity and just to make it succinct, but really I have a lot to say under all of them. <laughs> so preparation is key, this first one. That really means that I urge you all to start early. Um, I, if you didn't even consider Gilman right now and you know that you're going to be studying abroad this summer, fall, or spring, start right now. This needs to be as early as possible. Um, if you, this is something that's already been on your radar, then I applaud you for starting. If they at least start thinking about it in, in the prompts. If you start answering those questions in your head, you won't be as scared or intimidated when you open the application. So you're kind of like one step ahead. And also in terms of the documents, also prepare. Um, so it takes time to obtain that, that transcript. Like I mentioned, if you don't know how to do that, that's gonna take you some time to learn how to do that get that submitted, to fill out even the little basic pieces of the application, get those two things or those that and the approval and transcripts approval um, and application demographical information, get that out of the way first. So then you can really focus on the meat of your application, which is the essays. Um, so send that email out to those um, advisors that need those approvals and do those little small pieces so that you can really focus. Next is using your resources. So um, I always like to say, talk all the time about study abroad to like everyone in your circle, whether that's your friends or family or professors or advisors, whoever, talk to them about why you wanna study abroad. I like doing this a lot because it gets me to start thinking out loud and I start listening to my why. Because if you're going to talk about, oh, I have plans to study abroad, then you're de definitely going to be asked, why do you want to study abroad? Or where are you going? Or, you know, there's just a, a bunch of questions that you need to start thinking and talking about. And that's going to help. And ask for comments, like ask for feedback on like, does this sound like something um, that a scholarship uh, recip or a scholarship interview interview application person would like to hear? Do you, what do you think? Is this a cliche answer? Does this always get said when someone's talking about study abroad? Those are important pieces that you want to be critical about. And also um, for your resources wise, Google, as a first gen student, Google is my best friend. So I literally, the first thing I ever do with any application is Google like tips for insert blank application. Um, that kind of gets the ball rolling. You can even do examples of essays. Now I kind of urge you to not take up too much time focusing on other people's essays. I can even send you my own essays if you guys would like to see those types of, of examples, but really it's for you to get the ball rolling and for you to um, consider some pieces and, and structures that people have used, but it's not to take that from them. Um, it should definitely be authentic and it should be you. So um, be intentional about how you read other people's work. It's su not supposed to be a comparison. It's supposed to be a guide and a structure. Um, and for my next point for asking um, for help, oh, sorry, allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Um, for this one, the Gilman Scholarship is like literally created for students with need. It, I have a quote from the Gilman website that says the Gilman Scholarship Program broadens the student population that studies and interns abroad by supporting undergraduate students who might not otherwise participate due to financial constraints. So talk about your need in the application. I know that's really personal and vulnerable stuff. But that's what makes it important for reviewers to know about you. It's part of your story. Um, so here are some questions that I actually laid out that I asked myself when I was thinking about um, the prompts. These aren't the prompts themselves, but they aid in developing that idea of why is this important for me? Because I mean, in my case, and it could be in, in some of your guys' cases, is that if you don't receive scholarships, you're not studying abroad, you know? So that's really important to convey. And that doesn't have to be explicit, but if you can 
find a way to intertwine that into your essays and, in, and into your story, then that will be good. So ask yourself, why is it important for you to study abroad? Why do you need it in order to achieve your long-term goals? Where's the connection between you studying abroad now and what you wanna do when you grow up type of question, right? What are your unique skills and talents on your the personal level? So some of those behaviors and characteristics that you have, but also on your academic level, like the study habits that you have or the connections and networking pieces that you have with your professors. What are those things? And what stories and, and examples do you have to back that up? Um, what do you value and what impact do you wanna make when you come back? Those are some of the key po points that I, I think as um, I've been a reviewer for scholarships before. I love to hear that part. I love to hear, okay, so who is this person and what do they wanna do when they come back? Or what do, what do they wanna do with this money? That's really important. You're asking for money. Um, so you want to be able to have a plan as to why that money is needed. And then finally, this last one, ask for help. Your loved ones wanna help you your advisors want to help you. The Office of uh, Study Abroad wants to help you. I've heard them say it so many times and talking in this presentation. I want to help you. I'll say it right now. I, re I want to help you. I want to proofread your essay if you need me to proofread your essay. If you're on a, having a writer's block, I'm down to help you kind of break down why that is or where you're stuck or what's going on. So ask for help, ask questions all the time. Ask questions about anything to, to anybody who's already been in this space. And it's really nice here that I've been, you know, fortunate to have this scholarship and that I have the time to, to do that, to answer your guys' questions and um, provide you any piece of help throughout the application process. Also, I highly recommend if it's no one, find a, uh, if it's not one of us, at least find someone, maybe it's your close friend or a teacher or, I mean, a professor or a mentor, whoever, but at least one person needs to proofread your essays, if not multiple, because different eyes are different minds and they see things that you don't. And so it's really valuable that you get another set of eyes looking in there and um, helping you to develop that story that you're trying to tell. This piece isn't on here, but I want to include to believe in yourself during this process because I know it's like, in my case, I, like I mentioned, it was between doing this or not sitting abroad. Like if I didn't get this, then I didn't know where I was gonna get the funds to do it. So if you start with this positive and optimistic mindset about you, yourself and your capabilities, um, then that is already a, like a hundred steps ahead. Actually, it makes the whole difference when you can, when you can convey your confidence and your the belief in yourself in your essays, so that the people reading and reviewing them can see that you know that you have what it takes to get in these spaces and to get in these worlds that you've never seen before. We want to the not we sorry the interviewers or re, application reviewers want to know that you're ready, and so you need to convey that and you need to tell yourself that you're ready too. So quick little um, sidetrack, side note about just my program in general. I participated in the summer of 2019. Wow, I can't believe it's gonna be two years ago. Um, I went uh, and I chose summer because it was more feasible for me. I was doing a lot during my semesters and I didn't wanna take off the entire time. Um, so I thought this was perfect, but it was also a program that involved other students from across the country. So this was sponsored by TRIO, Student Support Services. Um, and I was the representative from Wichita State that was accepted to uh, participate in the Keith Sharon Global Leaders Program. Uh, but along with, uh, I think about like 20 or so more students as you see pictured from TRIO's, TRIO Student Support Services from all over the United States. So it was so cool to get even just like diversity, United States diversity. And then we are all just in a plane getting sent over to the Netherlands with more diversity. And so it's it was awesome. It was a great experience. The connections that I made with my peers from the program, but also from the people at the um, summer school program that we actually went to class for um, was amazing. And I still talk to these people to this day, which is the beauty of study abroad for me. It's the connections and those long lasting relationships that we have. And these are going to be in all kinds of different places. That's so cool for me to think that like, I have a friend from Minnesota who I spent the entire program with. So anytime I'm ever in the area, or if I wanna be, or if we wanna meet up, I have someone that lives in, the, in this state that I can see, but not even that on a bigger scale. 
I have friends in the Netherlands now. I can go to The Hague and I can say, hey, I remember when I was here studying abroad. Yeah, I'm coming soon and I want to revisit. So that was super cool and one of the best parts about it. We had um, three different classes that we took during the three week span, two electives and one that was or, yeah, I mean four, two electives and two classes that were for the entire um, cohort of students. So we had one on diversity and inclusion in Dutch society and another on um, sustainable development goals that the United Nations created for um, the world and, and just big challenges. And so we had those two classes that the entire cohort took. And then I chose um, the elective of um, migration so I just learned about local migration in The Hague and the, um, sorry, state, no, national migration migration for the Netherlands. So I learned about um, some of those key components of, of the country and how people have migrated to, to The Hague and different parts of the Netherlands. Um, so it, it was really nice and I had a really great experience and I was able to take these pieces and see how though they're different and though it's on a, in a Dutch context, it is still related to my own family and background and how my parents um, immigrated from Mexico to the United States. So things that I was interested in, which made it a lot easier for me to write about um, in my essays. So definitely in terms of programs, I encourage you to find one that really does fit you and your needs because it's gonna be able, you're gonna be able to really uh, make that shine when you write your essays for the any scholarship application. And um, lastly, kind of to wrap my part up, um, just I put a, a contact information slide in here because I really do mean it when I say that I will read your, proofread your essays, I will provide feedback, I will answer your questions, I will boost you up and hype you up if you feel like this isn't something that you are meant to do because you can't afford to do it. No, these are things that I feel very truly passionate about and I hope that you all take advantage of um, because they're life changing. After I came back from, from the Netherlands, I knew that I wanted to spend a year abroad. I knew I wanted to live for a longer period of time than three weeks. And that's even led me to, with the Gilman and its connection to the Department of State, apply for a Fulbright that I would be able to go and teach in another country for that amount of time. So it, it's just gonna open so many doors of opportunities for you. And it's gonna help you reimagine a world that is far greater than what we think it is. And it, I think that's beautiful. So definitely take down my email and my um, social media. If you want my phone number, ask me on the chat and I will be more than happy to help you with whatever piece you need. All right, thank you, Mary Bell. I appreciate you sharing about your experience. Um, did a great job. I always love hearing from students um, who've gone through this. Um, I think that's a very impactful um, part for other students um, to know that it is possible and there's a lot of people here to help you. Um, we want to guide you and support you find the right program and um, find one that's affordable to you and scholarships to help um, make that happen. So um, just to kind of finish up this uh, webinar. I have um, a couple more slides. One is related to just creating a budget. So you definitely want to be aware of what the costs are for your particular program. So if it's a summer program, then oftentimes they're going to spell out what the costs are. Um, if it's a faculty-led program that's through WSU, then we usually have those listed because those costs can vary quite a bit. Um, it could depend on, you know, the length of the program, how many credit hours you're enrolled in, um, obviously the location, you know, on what the cost might be. And if you're not sure, then definitely reach out to us. Um, sometimes they don't list it all really clearly. Um, they may not list the cost of the flight and other items. So we can help you with that um, so that you have a better picture of what would be all the costs for a particular program that you might be interested in applying for. Um, we do have expense sheets um, with estimated costs that are available for most of our exchange partner universities. So for students who are looking at spending either a semester or a year on exchange, um, we do have that available on our website. Those can be very helpful um, when you're looking at budgeting, if you're doing one of those programs, because we have really taken into account pretty much all of your expenses. And it also has a summary at the bottom that explains how we came up with the amounts, because oftentimes, um, you know, certain amounts are pretty set, what the tuition might be, 
um, what you might need for, let's say, an, uh, an international health insurance for your flight. Um, some costs, though, just like here in Wichita, could vary a little bit when it comes to accommodations because that university might have several options. So we'll list one, you know, of the possible options with what the cost might be on that expense sheet. But you can certainly look into more detail um, on that summary that we have and then also on their website so that you have a better idea of what to plan for when it comes to the cost for your particular program. And then um, I always like to mention, um, you know, the Office of Student Money Management, they have financial coaches. Um, it's not necessarily that it's specifically for study abroad, but they're certainly available for students to help you budget. Um, and this can be something, you know, if you're planning ahead, you know, a year or two years before you're going to study abroad, you might consider meeting with one, um, going to their website, get ideas on, you know, what can you be doing now to be, uh, have a better, you know, budget with your current expenses. Maybe there's things that you could be cutting back on. Um, you know, a little bit of sacrifice over a year, two years before you do a study abroad program could then go a long ways when it comes to you going on the actual program, being able to save money um, before you go, especially um, to help cover extra expenses that, you know, maybe you want to do traveling outside of the study abroad program. Well, scholarships are usually not going to cover that. So if you want to travel and visit other places, then that's where you definitely want to be able to save some money uh, before you do your program. And then certainly talk with us in the study abroad office. Again, I kind of already mentioned, you know, we can sit down with you. And once we know the actual program that you're going to go on, we can come up with pretty good estimates of what you would need to budget for and expect um, for your particular uh, study abroad program. And as uh, Mary Bell mentioned, you know, you do have to come up with an amount within the Gilman application that's part of the application itself that we can help you with uh, the estimate for your total expenses. There are things that you um, need to include. There's other things that, that cannot be included, um, but we can help you come up with that amount because that's something we also certify um, on the approval side from study abroad is the amount that is entered. So if you are doing the Gilman, uh, we can certainly help you with that part. Um, as well, and um, any other information in the application that you might have questions about, we can also look at that with you. Um, I kind of mentioned a little bit already, obviously the costs can be affected by, you know, the program itself. So just considering, you know, choosing the right program for you, you know, uh, for a lot of students, cost is going to be a huge factor. Um, so, you know, you, you may be taking things into consideration like the location, the length um, of the program, the type of program that it is, all of those things could affect the costs that are associated with that program and also even the scholarships that might be available to you. So in some cases, while maybe a semester long program might be more expensive than obviously going in the summer, there might be a lot more scholarships uh, available for you to apply for for a semester program than for some of the summer programs. So in the end, it, it could become more cost effective to actually do a semester, depending on where you want to go and what type of program you want to do. Uh, the Gilman, you know, that program in particular is key because the program needs to be at least three weeks in length. So if you're looking at programs that are not three weeks, and you would be eligible for the Gilman, then you know, we may want to try to find a program that would be at least three weeks long so that you could still apply for that Gilman scholarship. Um, if you're not eligible for the Gilman, then in that sense, the length of time may be um, you know, less important to you. Um, but that's something we can look at with you again, um, especially when cost is a huge factor, is you know, don't always get caught up in the location. Um, if you're studying a language, then that makes a little more sense, you know, why you might want to go to a particular country. But if you are a little more open on where you could go, what type of program, then we can certainly look more into, um, based on your particular needs, of which ones would be more affordable, have more scholarships available that you could be eligible for to uh, apply and in order to help you with those costs. 
Um, so quickly, the next steps, uh, if you haven't attended an information session before, um, and that could be in person, we've had in person information sessions last semester, and we do have a few this semester, or our virtual where you just watch our study abroad um, information session video on our website, and that's going to be on that page, wichita.edu slash study abroad links. Um, that would really be your next step. If you've already done that, uh, maybe you've even already applied for a program, and you're probably moving quite along in the process. If you have specific questions about what kind of scholarships you can apply for, then you can certainly always email me. But if you are, you know, watching this and you haven't done that first step of an information session, that's really your next thing that you'll want to do. And then after we, after you do that, we do advising appointments um, right now, either over Zoom or on the phone. And then we would help you with determining which program is the best fit for you. And then ultimately leading into scholarships and any other items that you have questions on. And then the last slide here just has our contact information. So you have my email address. Um, if you have questions, our, just our general uh, website, definitely check out our Facebook page or Instagram. Um, we're always posting, um, you know, sharing experiences from past study abroad students about future study abroad programs, scholarships you can apply for. So that's a great way just to kind of be learning more about what kind of opportunities might be out there that might pique your interest. Um, it's just checking out and seeing what we have. We also have other uh, webinar recordings on our website that are from uh, various webinars we did in the fall with students sharing about their experiences and also ones that we did on specific semester and summer programs. So I would encourage you to even consider checking those out if you haven't already. Those might be helpful just when you're thinking about what type of program you might wanna go, uh, go on. And so um, thank you for everybody you know, joining today and a special thank you to Mary Bell uh, I appreciate her being here and sharing about her experience with us.